On the 30th of November, 1994, Tupac was gunned down at the Quad Studios. On the exact same day, one year later, Stretch was killed in his hometown after being chased by two perpetrators in a car. Coincidence? Or a clear message that this was a revenge killing on behalf of Tupac? On a recent Vlad TV interview, Reggie Wright Jr., who has been spilling a lot of tea lately, revealed without explicitly spelling it out that he believes an associate of Tupac had something to do with the killing of Stretch. It's well known that up until the time of his death, Tupac believed Stretch had something to do with the Quad Studios shooting. Check out my previous videos on this, link below, and let me briefly explain why. First, Stretch knew those who were allegedly involved. Being from Queens, he knew Haitian Jack and Jimmy Henchman, as they were well-known New York gangsters. Stretch was with Tupac at the time of the shooting. Tupac couldn't understand why he was the only one who was targeted. Stretch towered over everyone at 6'8", that's how he got his nickname. But the gunman didn't target Stretch, despite him being on paper their biggest threat. In an interview with Vibe writer Kevin Powell, Park said, I was like, what should I do? I'm thinking Stretch is going to fight. He was towering over those. From what I know about the criminal element, if a guy comes to rob you, they always go for the big dude first. But they didn't touch Stretch. They came straight to me. Everybody dropped to the floor like potatoes, but I just froze up. It wasn't like I was being brave or nothing. I just could not get on the floor. And then, Stretch relayed information from Jimmy Henchman while Park was recovering from the shooting. That's when he became suspicious of him and thought he had something to do with setting him up. Now, all the evidence points towards Tupac being set up. He was commissioned to work with Little Sean, an artist who was represented by Jimmy Henchman, a known New York gangster who turned music manager. So, uh, when Dude got there, and got off the elevator. Okay, I'm just, I gotta, I gotta ask. When you say dude, you say Tupac. Tupac. All right, right, cool. So, even the account that he made, <coughs> that's not what happened. What's the account that he made? Can we? Can he we said recap? everybody. He said got the elevator. Everybody ran from him, and they wasn't. That's not what happened. <coughs> we ran towards him, and we was wow. trying to get him to sit down. Wow. And he went to sit down, and he popped back up. <laughs> Because Which is he, what C says. C says that all the time. Yes, yeah, C says that yes, all the time. Yes, we didn't know. Right? And he said, call my mother. And detectives got there. Ambulance got there, right? And they put him in the, the gurney <coughs> and they stood him up and they brought him in the elevator to bring him down. Speaking about his reasons for going there, Tupac admitted that he had reservations and that he was suspicious of Jimmy Henchman. He said, quote, I met him through some rough characters I knew. He was trying to get legitimate and all that. So I thought I was doing him a favor. But when I called him back for directions, he was like, I don't have the money. So I said, if you don't have the money, I'm not coming. Tupac didn't really like to charge people if he thought he was doing them a favor, especially his fellow black people, because he wanted to help them, you know, get ahead as well. So he only charged Jimmy Henchman because he was suspicious of him. He hung up the phone, then called me back. I'm going to call Andre Harrell to make sure you get the money, but I'm going to give you the money out of my pocket. So I said, all right, I'm on my way. As we were walking up the building, somebody screamed from up the top of the studio. It was little Caesar, Biggie's side man. That's my homeboy. As soon as I saw him, all my concerns about the situation were relaxed. So he's probably lured there under false pretenses. It's obvious he was the target and they knew exactly where he was gonna be. This incident was classed as a robbery initially. Haitian Jack hinted that the shooting was for revenge. Tupac made some comments in the Daily News where he called Haitian Jack a hanger on. This was considered extremely disrespectful, especially because he made those comments in New York. 
in their minds, they ran New York. When interviewed by Ice-T, Jack claimed that one of his associates decided that Tupac had to be disciplined, but later called him to inform him that it went wrong. I got the call within 30 seconds after it happened. He said, listen, man, I, I got it, homie. And it went all bad. And I said, I said, wrong number and hung up. So someone called you up. I assume you know who it was because you answered. And they said that the job went bad. They said, listen, I got that dude. Remember, I told everybody not to get at him. Somebody got at him. They got at him. It is believed that this person is Jimmy Henchman. But of course, Jack didn't name him. So Tupac was more than likely set up. But that doesn't mean that Stretch had anything to do with it. Neither Puffy or Biggie, who he also accused of being involved. Tupac was understandably very paranoid around this time. And clearly, he was suffering from the effects of post-traumatic stress disorder. In the Kevin Powell interview, he said, quote, Yes, I have headaches. I wake up screaming. I've been having nightmares thinking they're still shooting me. All I see is Nick pulling guns and I hear the dude saying, shoot that mother effer. And I'll be like, damn, I have a headache. The psychiatrist at Bellevue said that's post-traumatic stress. Tupac said it hurt him that the other guys just dropped to the floor. But to be fair, they did have guns pointed at them and they were unarmed. So what could they have done? In the 2005 Vibe interview, Jimmy recalled a conversation with Park. Apparently he told him, nobody came to rob you, they came to discipline you. That's what happened. Stretch was on Tupac's song, Many Tears, but he was removed from the track, just in time for the third album, All Eyes On Me. Speaking of the fallout and Tupac's suspicion of him, Stretch himself said, me and Park have been down from day one, before he did Juice. That's my man. So the interview he did in Vibe bugged me out. But I know him. He likes to talk a lot, especially when he's upset. He'll say ish that he won't even mean. And then he'll think about it later and be like, damn, why the F did I say that? In that interview, all that ish Park was talking about thug life is ignorant and telling people's names and all that ish. I don't even understand why he went there. I've seen Park mad times after the shooting. He never kicked none of that ish to me. You know how he feels about the media. So why would he go and do an interview like that? He's supposed to be a street dude. He should have kept it in the street. I mean, guys had to go and get their names changed. I want him to get a reality check. Recognize what the F he's doing. Dudes on the street live by rules, man. And that rule right there, that's a rule that's never to be broken. In regards to him being so tall and not fighting those guys, Stretch told Vibe, Park saying all this ish in the interview, like, I thought that Stretch was gonna fight. He was towering over them. Now that dude knows I ain't never gonna be out like no bitch. But I ain't dumb. I ain't got no gun. What the f am I supposed to do? I might be towering over them, but I ain't towering over no slugs. Just four months after this interview, Stretch was killed. Others have since come out in defense of Stretch, such as Napoleon Mutabil and Nas, and also the boyfriend of Tupac's sister at the time, Zaid, who was there that night too. He also believes that Stretch had nothing to do with it and that it was unfair for Tupac to talk about them dropping like potatoes. That part always cracks me up. The general consensus is that it was Jimmy Henchman behind it all, allegedly. Jimmy Henchman is currently serving a life sentence plus 20 years. He practically had a lifetime of runnings with the law. He was convicted of drug trafficking, conspiracy to murder and murder for hire. Exactly a year after the quad shooting, apparently almost to the minute, Stretch was chased by two guys in a car. After a high speed chase, Stretch was shot and crashed his car into a tree. He had just dropped off his brother after giving him a ride. According to Nas, he had given him a ride that night too. Sadly, he passed away, leaving behind his family, such as his mother, 
brothers and sisters, and a daughter. His daughter was incidentally Tupac's goddaughter. At the time of the killing, Stretch's mother said, he never talked to me about having enemies. My son was a very loving, kind person. I don't know why they did this to him. When Tupac was asked about Stretch's murder, honestly, Tupac sounded pretty matter of fact about it. In an interview with Source magazine, he said, Stretch was my closest dog, my closest homie. I did a lot of drama. I got into a lot of cases and ish because of Stretch. Money-wise, he could have had anything. His daughter was my daughter. Whatever she wanted, she could have. Then this stuff happened and he didn't ride for me. He didn't do what your dog is supposed to do when you're shut up. When I was in jail, he never wrote me. He never got at me. His homeboys was coming to see me and he wasn't coming to see me. And he started hanging around Biggie right after this. I'm in jail, shut up. His main dog and he hanging out and going to shows with Biggie. Both of them never came to see me. And here we are in 2021, still talking about it. And we hear Reggie Wright Jr. hinting that maybe Stretch's killing was a revenge killing on behalf of Tupac. So we have the date of the killing, exactly a year after the quad shooting. And he said Tupac was seen hugging someone in the studio. He was known for being involved in some sketchy activities. There was also something to do with Pac was dissing Biggie and them and, and Stretch didn't want to go along with that because he was cool with some of them dudes as well. Okay. You know what I mean? That's what I heard. But you, you have your take only on this. Only reason my opinion is, only reason, because yeah. I don't have no first-hand knowledge of this, is, number one, it happened on the anniversary date of the shooting incident at the Quad Studios with Tupac. Yeah. Happened on that, a year to the date. Associate of ours was out there. He came back a day or two later. Pac hugged him like he was Kadada. Hmm. That's all I'll say. Okay. Somewhat inferring that this guy who he hugged has something to do with Stretch's murder. That's my only reason for believing what I believe. Uh huh. Got it. We'll never know, probably. Man's dead now, so. Oh, so, so the guy who Pac hugged is no longer alive. No longer. So the story probably died along with him. Exactly. Okay. A hug doesn't prove anything, but Reggie seemed to say a lot without saying much. Do you think there's anything behind what Reggie alluded to, that there could be some truth to it? Was Stretch killed on behalf of Tupac? I would love to hear your thoughts on this. This is something I have always wondered when I heard about Stretch's killing. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for weekly videos. Leave a comment and don't forget to press the bell for more.